Okay, um, let me start by saying I'm no expert with Pix and Sight, but again, people have asked me how I use it. Um, I've only owned a copy for a few months, but in my experience, it's certainly not intuitive for new users, and it's very easy to just say, I'm going to give up and go back to something else. So anyway, I'm going to show you my setup. On the right hand side are all the processes I use all the time. Now, every time I open Pix and Sight, they're there for me. And this is the processes and where you get them from. So let me show you how I do it. So I'm going to add a process, I minimize it, and I drag it over to this side. And then what I do is I save a project. I'll just change the name so it doesn't overwrite my original working because I don't particularly want that all the time. There it is. Save it. And now if I just close Pix and Sight, on my desktop, I've, that is the working project that I've just shared, saved. So if I double click that, it will open Pix and Sight and you will see that what we've got is all the processes, including the one I've just added, sitting on the right hand side. So that means that every time you open the project from your desktop, all the processes you use will be there ready for you. All of our EVScope PNGs that we want to use and stack in Pix and Sight need to be in a folder. So we create a folder and then they're ready to be imported. Now we use star alignment to align all of our images and we pick a one that we would like to use as our master, so pick your best. Then we select all the files and add them. And the next thing we need to do is we need somewhere where all of these aligned images are stored. So we create a new folder called align or whatever you would like to call it. <clears throat> and now we can set it away with this blue circle. This will take all of the images that you've got in your folder. In this case, it's the Cocoon Nebula. And what it's doing is aligning them so that they're all perfectly aligned. So when we stack and integrate all of those images, there's no blurring. Okay, it's finished. So now we're going to minimize that, not close it, minimize. Now we're going to double click and open the integration. This is where they're all stacked. And when we click add files, we go to a folder we call the line and we add all of the images that have been aligned for us. And then we add what are called drizzle files, which have been automatically created. I'm not quite sure whether that actually is worth doing with the EV scope, but nonetheless, I do it. Then once again, we press the blue circle and it's starting now. It's taking all of those aligned images and it's stacking them so that we're getting the best signal to noise ratio. Okay, so what it's done now is it's stacked all of these files. We minimize that. And as you can see, there's lots, this is the background. You can see that all the pictures were taken over a very long period of time. So therefore it's had to rotate each image to align the stars. And this is our integrated master. And if we press this icon here, we can get a rough idea of what we will get when we stretch it. But let's just put it back to where it was. Now I save the integration. And the reason I do that is so that if things go wrong, I can go back and I don't have to go through all the stacking and aligning process again. I've got my master, it's there all the time. Now the next thing to do is to use the automatic background extractor. And what this is going to do is it's going to extract the background and try and even it up a bit. And as always, let's minimize that. We don't need that background, so let's get rid of it. And we don't really want that integration, but we'll not close it, we'll just minimize it and keep it there in case we need it again. So what's next? Well, color calibration, but I'm not going to use that. Let's just go to the histogram transformation. 
Now, in the bottom right, that little icon there resets everything, so do that. And then select the name of your image that you're going to um, work on. Press the red circle, pull this out of the way. Now, this is where we're stretching it. So we can pull this along, and it's pulling up. You can see the image developing. The blacks is too far away. You don't want to cut the blacks too tight. Leave yourself a margin, pull them along a bit, but don't overdo the stretching. You can do more later on. That's it, and let's get that black to just going to be black. Click the square, and that applies it to a master. So now we can minimize that, and we can shut the preview screen, because we don't need the preview screen anymore. And you can see what we've achieved so far. Now, the next thing I want to do is to get rid of as much noise as I can, and I use the RC Astro Noise Exterminator, which minimizes any noise in the image. Now, I'm reliably informed that the sensor we've got is an RGGB. So with the EVScope, we're actually getting twice as much green as we want. So I run this, this SCRN just to get rid of the green or the excess green. Then we have a curves transformation. Once again, let's reset it. Press the preview button. And now we can stretch that image a little bit further and control the blacks, play around with it to get what we want. And if you make a mistake, which I've just done there by creating too many handles, just reset it, go back, do it again. Let's see if we get as much as we can of the, the cocoon nebula and pull the blacks down a bit. Keep the blacks as black as we can keep them without them being thick, solid black. Press the square, that applies it. Get rid of the preview, minimize, and there we have our basic image. We're not going to do any more. There's lots and millions of things you can do with Pix inside, but what I want to do is save this. And I'll just save it as it's the integration ABI tip, which is the second integration. Saving it in the same folder that I keep all of the things in. Save it as a 16 bit. And then we go into Photoshop. And if we open that in Photoshop, and what we're going to do is go to the Cocoon folder, open the integration ABA, which is the one we've stretched, and we can see it in Photoshop. And now that's when I start doing the manipulation of Photoshop, which I showed in an earlier video. Now, for interest, let's just open the integration file, the original one, where all we've done is a line. We haven't done any stretching. And you see the cocoon's hardly there. When we've stretched it, we've pulled out an awful lot of data and a lot of things that we can now work on in Photoshop. Okay, um, let me start by saying I'm no 